Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. So I definitely didn't expect today to be a two cup of coffee day, but um, yeah, uh, right after lunch... Apparently, some spoilers happen, even though it is not spoiler season yet. So if you haven't seen my episode on Lord Xander the Collector, make sure you check it out at some point. This commander is absolutely brutal. And of course, also make sure you check out my episode on Jetmere Nexus of Revels. It's an extremely fun commander, and also my most recent episode. But do not leave this episode just yet, because on this episode, I am talking about... Hopefully the last spoiler for today. Goodness gracious, I don't want another cup of coffee. Or maybe I should say I don't want to need another cup of coffee. Regardless, Rafine Scheming Seer is a commander with a spicy new mechanic. So, before we jump into cards that work very well through Rafine, a big thank you to Eddie for all your help during spoiler season. And of course, if I make any mistakes, which I'm sure I've already made mistakes, blame Eddie, because it's always Eddie's fault, not mine. You know, with that said, let's jump into it. So, Rafine Scheming Seer is a 1-4 Sphinx Demon. I, I think this is the first time we've ever seen that combination, but I could be wrong, and please do not comment below. Changelings! Changelings are Sphinx Demons, too! I know. Anyways, it's got Flying in Ward 1, and it costs white, blue, black. It has, whenever you attack, target attacking creature Connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Now, Connive, of course, is a brand new mechanic from this set, and that spicy new mechanic that I alluded to, obviously. Anyways, it means you're going to draw X cards, then discard X cards, put a plus one counter on that creature for each non card discarded this way. Now, and this is just my assumption as we haven't seen any other cards with this mechanic, but I assume that that X variable is essentially going to change. You know, maybe sometimes that is a set number, like one, two, three on other cards, but... Yeah, for this new commander, this is an X value based on the number of attacking creatures. So this is a fantastic attack trigger that can give us a ton of card selection. I mean, basically card advantage, you know, when you're discarding dead cards in your hand. And of course, on top of that, when you are discarding non-land cards, you are getting counters on that creature that you chose to connive with. If that's the, the proper way of saying that. Connive with. I, I'm sure my creature is conniving. I'm conniving with my creature. Regardless. The wider you go and the more creatures that you attack with, the bigger the benefit that you get from this. And of course, there are plenty of conniving things that you can do with this conniving commander. Because there are plenty of ways in this color combination to benefit not just from drawing cards, but from discarding cards as well. And of course, again, while you're doing so, you can make a creature absolutely massive. You know, who thought that this, you know, 1-4 flying sphinx demon could take you out, you know, with commander damage, but eventually it definitely can if you're discarding enough non land cards to pump it and to make it massive. But with all that said, let's jump into some cards that you might want to consider if you want to build around this commander. First up, we are definitely going to want to take advantage of drawing cards, and some cards that do a great job at that are cards like Teferi's Ages Insight, Thought Reflection, and Tomorrow Azami's Familiar. Teferi's Ageless Insight says if you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So this essentially doubles up every single one of your card draws, you know, except for that first one you get in the turn. Regardless, yeah, with that knife attack trigger, it says, hey, normally, you know, you'd be at parity. You would draw X cards based on the number of attacking creatures and you would discard that many cards. But now you're drawing double that amount of cards and discarding essentially, you know, half of the total that you're drawing. So if you're attacking with five creatures, now you are drawing 10 cards and then you only discard five. So you're up five cards. I mean, the card selection on this commander is already incredibly powerful. But yeah, now it's just straight up card advantage, which of course is even more absurd. So of course, another example of this kind of effect comes with Thought Reflection, which says if you would draw a card, draw two cards instead. 
basically a more expensive enchantment, at least mana-wise, that does the exact same thing, but with initial benefit of basically letting you draw an initial card, you know, for your first one in the turn. Regardless, another big way to take advantage of this, though, is with a card like Tomorrow Azami's Familiar. It says, if you would draw a card, look at the top three cards of your library. Instead, put one of those cards in your hand and the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. So now when you are drawing again with that example of say five cards, you are basically looking at the top 15 cards of your library, you know, three at a time essentially, and picking the best one of those three each time. So the amount of card selection just gets exponentially better. And yeah, you still have to discard, but you're also picking the best cards possible. So you're probably gonna run into some cards that are better than the ones you already have in your hand. And of course, in combination with, you know, a thought reflection to Fairy's Age's Insight, yeah, tomorrow can get pretty absurd. Regardless, another card that is absolutely fantastic in this deck, I mean, it might be the golden pig of the actual deck itself, let's talk about Nadir Kraken. It is a 2-3 Kraken that says, whenever you draw a card, you may pay 1 if you do put a plus 1 counter on Nadir Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature token. So now by conniving with your commander and attacking with a decent amount of creatures, you draw a good amount of cards, then if you put some mana into this for each card that you drew, you're going to make even more creature tokens, and you also grow Nadir Kraken along the way, and then next turn, you swing with even more creatures to get more creatures, and to draw more cards, and to discard more cards, and you see where this is going. Nadir Kraken is an absolutely incredible card with this commander. So much so that I could definitely see this card being one that increases in price because of this commander being spoiled. So yeah, I believe right now it's right around a dollar. So if you're looking to build around this commander, it might be one that you want to pick up sooner rather than later. And yet another card that you definitely might want to consider. Let's talk about Drake Haven. Drake Haven says, whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one if you do create a 2-2 blue Drake creature token with flying. Oh, okay, May maybe I was mistaken. Drake Haven might actually be your, your golden pig. Now, obviously, Nadir Kraken can be better if you've got, the, you know, those draw doublers. But still, I mean, this one is going to essentially, on the other end, you know, instead of gaining advantage off of drawing, you're gaining advantage off of discarding, and you're making 2-2 two, two flyers every single time you pay for that. So yeah, you can build your board up in absolutely no time with this. And you can also decimate your opponent's boards in absolutely no time with Archfiend of Ifnir. It's a 5-4 Flying Demon that says whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent's control. So again, attack with five creatures, and all of a sudden, you are going to be drawing five cards, discarding five cards, and putting five minus one, minus one counters on every single one of your opponent's creatures. This is obviously going to wipe out the vast majority of creatures, and those that do survive are going to be teeny tiny, and you can wipe them out next turn. And of course, yet another discard benefit comes from Curator of Mysteries, which is incredible at this commander as well. It says, whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry one. So first up, again, with that conniving, you're getting a ton of card selection by drawing and discarding, so basically looting a ton. And then on top of that, you get even more card selection because you're going to be scrying a ton to get the right cards on top of your library for the next time that you're drawing. Now, obviously, there are other examples of cards that benefit you heavily from discarding, so... Yeah, make sure you take a look into those, especially Bone Miser. That is going to be an incredible one in this deck as well. But we don't have time to cover all those. Because we also have to cover Madness cards as well, with cards like Front of the Floorboards, Curse of Fool's Wisdom, and Big Game Hunter. These are definitely some other kinds of cards that you might want to consider, and it's a fantastic mechanic that works very well with this commander. From under the floorboards has Madness for X Black Black, so basically if you discard this card, you discard to Exile, and when you do, you can cast it for its Madness cost or put it in your graveyard. Normally, you would create three tap 2-2 Black Zombie Creature tokens and gain three life, but if the spell's Madness cost was paid, instead you create X of those tokens and you gain X life. So instead of essentially losing out on the card that you are discarding, you are getting value from it, and actually even more value potentially than what you would have gotten if you would have just cast it. So make a ton of tokens with this so that you can swing next turn and, you know, connive even further. Or how about a card like Curse of Fool's Wisdom, which says enchant player, whenever enchanted player draws a card, they lose two life and you gain two life and it's got a madness cost of three and a black. So normally this would cost you two more, but again with this commander, it's very easy for you to actually just discard this and cast it for its madness cost to get a ton of value out of it and to drain an opponent very efficiently. And speaking of efficient, let's talk about Big Game Hunter, a 1-1 Human Rebel Assassin, because that's a thing that says when it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature with power 4 or greater, it can't be regenerated. Oh, and it's got a badness cost of, of just a black. So yeah, that is a fantastic ETB, and again, for just one mana, that's a really good deal.
And speaking of good deals, though, let's talk about another potential direction that you might take this deck, and that would be a reanimator kind of deck with cards like Stitch Together, Victimize, and Unburial Rites. Stitch Together is an incredibly efficient reanimation spell for the right deck, and this is one that it can fit right into. It says return target card from your graveyard to your hand, but if you've got Threshold, meaning that you've got seven or more cards in your graveyard, which is going to be incredibly easy for you to meet, it says return that card from your graveyard to the battlefield instead, if you've got seven more cards in your graveyard. And I just said that, so sorry. I didn't, I forgot that the card said that. Now I'm rambling. Anyways, a two mana reanimation spell in a deck where you can just discard massive creatures into your graveyard very easily. Yeah, sign me up for that. Also sign me up for this next card. Victimize is a fantastic sorcery that says choose two target creatures in your graveyard. Sacrifice a creature if you do. Return the chosen cards to the battlefield tapped. So again, in this kind of a deck, you probably want to build in a good amount of token synergies, so make some tokens, and then you know what? Let's just sacrifice one of those tiny tokens to go get two massive creatures, maybe some Eldrazi from our graveyard, because why not? And of course, there are plenty of other fantastic reanimation spells in these colors. I mean, Unburial Rites is one that you can use twice, and it's even one that you can actually get into your graveyard for a more efficiently costed flashback. It says return to our creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, and its flashback cost is just three and a white, so again, you're going to save a mana then instead of just actually casting it. Or, you know, you can cast it, then use it again. But again, make sure you're considering cards that you can actually utilize from your graveyard, you know, cards like that have flashback, or jumpstart, or aftermath, etc, etc, etc. And of course, with graveyard synergies, you can also consider cards that deal with Encore, you know, like Arami of the Dead Tide, which is a fantastic card in this deck. Arami has tap, exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have, target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn, the Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. So, use your commander to get a ton of things into your graveyard, then on a future turn, we'll exile some of those cards, give a massive creature that you dumped into your graveyard Encore, and then have fun Encoring it, getting three copies of it, swinging with all of them to help you connive even further, and you know, to just smack your opponents for a ton as well. Of course, another way to take advantage of cards in graveyards is with a card like Spell Twine. It says exile target insert sorcery card from your graveyard and target insert sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard, copy those cards, cast the copies if able without paying their mana cost, exile spell twine. So maybe you've got a massive insert sorcery that you want to dump into your graveyard and then essentially cast, you know, with spell twine instead. You're getting extra value out of that, you might be saving some mana, and you get some value from an opponent's spell too. And speaking of extra value, yeah, another card to consider is going to be Ceranic Resonator. It has pay two tap, copy target, triggered ability you control, you may choose targets for the copy. Again, our commander's attack trigger is a triggered ability, so yeah, let's just pay two mana to double that up, draw twice as many cards essentially, and discard twice as many cards. And with this deck, we can actually take advantage of a fantastic class in this deck with Wizard Class. Its level 1 says you have no maximum hand size, which definitely might help with a lot of draw synergies. It says when this class becomes level 2, draw 2 cards. Again, draw synergies. And most importantly, its level 3 is whenever you draw a card, put a plus 1 counter on target creature you control. So this more than doubles up, essentially, the counter synergies that you're getting with that connive trigger. Because again, with that trigger, you are getting counters on a creature based on the number of non-land cards that you are discarding. But with this, it's just like, hey, it's based on the number that you draw. So get a ton of counters on something like maybe your commander, which, you know, again, like I mentioned, your tiny little 1-4 commander can all of a sudden just be, you know, a 2 or even 1-shot kill with the right build. And to make it even easier to take your opponents out, maybe you include another class with Paladin class. It says spells your opponents cast during your turn cost one more to cast, and then it's level 2 says creatures you control get plus plus 1, which is always nice in a go wide strategy, and it's level 3 says... Whenever you attack, until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus plus one for each other attacking creature and gains double strike. So, yeah, I mean, if wizard class doesn't turn your commander into a one-shot kill, paladin class definitely will. And of course, in these colors, you've got access to plenty of fantastic ways to give your commander double strike, like, you know, Duelist Heritage, which is just a great card. It says whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn, so... Obviously, you can give a double strike to one of your creatures when it attacks, but on top of that, you can use this card in a very political way and help get some favors from some opponents by pumping up their creatures. Or, you know, just getting extra damage in on an opponent from an opponent's creature is pretty good too. One final thing that I do want to mention that this commander could take advantage of, again with the amount of cards that you can dig through, are extra turn spells. Temporal Manipulation, for example, is a sorcery that says take an extra turn for this one, so a very simple but incredibly powerful card. Obviously, with an extra turn, again, then you can attack again, connive a ton, draw and discard even more cards, maybe you draw into another extra turn spell, or a spell that can get this back in your hand, 
and then you keep doing this again and again and again and then well you're gonna win eventually so yeah this definitely could be a commander that utilizes kind of an extra turns type of strategy once it's set up enough But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on this commander. I definitely think that Connive is a very spicy mechanic. I'm excited to see all the different directions that they take it in this set. And yeah, speaking of different directions, there's a lot of different directions that you can actually take this commander itself. Again, you can take advantage of the amount of cards that you're drawing. You can take advantage of discarding cards. You can take advantage of, well, going wide. You can take advantage of madness. There's a lot of things that you can take advantage of. So one Rafine deck might lean into, again, those draw discard synergies, and another might lean into reanimation. And yeah, I'm excited to see some really spicy builds around this commander. Regardless, like I've said on a few other episodes today, if you are interested in building around this commander, you might want to consider picking up some cards for it sooner rather than later. During these spoiler seasons, there are definitely times when a new commander is spoiled, and as soon as that happens, certain cards start getting bought up that work very well with it. So, just in case you were interested in any of the cards that I brought up on this episode, there is a nice easy link for you in the description that will take you to a list of those cards. So, I hope you find that helpful, and of course, have a great time building around this commander in whatever way you want to. And with that, this show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So, in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thank you again, and have a good one.